Hey, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This is Dr. Durr. I'd like to welcome you back to the Wake Up Yasharel channel. Hallelujah. Today's presentation will be the Feast of Tabernacle, or what we call Sukkot, or Sukkot. Hallelujah. We want to praise the Most High today and give Him the glory. I want to say all praises to the Most High Yahuwah. I am He who breathes life. Behold the nail hands. His Son, Yahushua, Yahuwah, is salvation. The Ruach Hakadesh, the set apart spirit, the comforter, the one who leads us into all truth. Praying that all is well with you and your family. Praying that you will be obedient and that you will accomplish all that the Most High Yahuwah has given you to do. Let us pray. Yahuwah, my prayer and desire is to speak with compassion, power, authority, clarity, conviction, and confidence. And be convincing to the hearts, the mind, and soul of your people and sojourners all over this world. All I ask you, who is that you anoint this vessel of clay from the top of my head to the sole of my feet? In Yahushua HaMashiach's name we pray, hallelujah, so be it. Yahuwah, you are from everlasting to everlasting. You don't change. You remain the same. It's because you stand the same, hallelujah, we are not going to be consumed. Because you love Jacob and you promise him that you will save his seed. Yahuwah, we love you. We praise you. We glorify you. We magnify you. Oh, magnify Yah with me. Let us exalt his name together. This poor man cried and Yahuwah heard him and delivered him from all his fears. Oh, taste and see that Yah is good. Blessed is the man that trusted him. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but it's Yahuwah that's going to deliver us out of them all. Hold on, Yasharel. Yahuwah is going to come through for us. Hold on, Yasharel. I promise you he's going to make a way out of no way. Hold on, Yasharel, no matter what the enemy is scheming, no matter what they're coming up with, no matter what they're planning, if Yah be for us, then who can be against us? All praises to the Most High Yahuwah. All right, let's go over this chart. Once again, the Holy Feast, coming from Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. You get a chance, please read that chapter. It breaks down about Yahuwah's feast days, not man, but the Most High's feast days. All right, starting at verse 3, it deals with the weekly Shabbat. Verses 4 through 5 deals with Yahuwah's Passover. Verses 6 through 8 deals with the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Verses 8 through 14 deals with the Feast of First Fruit. Verses 15 through 22 deals with the Feast of Weeks, also called Pentecost. Verse 24 deals with the Feast of Trumpets. It's also entitled Yom Terah. Verses 26 through 32 deals with the Day of Atonement. Also, another name for it is Yom Kippur. Uh, then you have verses 33 through through 34, the Feast of Tabernacle. It's also what we call Sukkot. Hallelujah. You're looking at a picture of my book that I wrote some years back. It's being updated, upgraded. I'm working hard towards that, but I am teaching information from this book because it's still relevant. I'm just updating the names, updating some of the information, not based on Christianity anymore, but now based on the Hebraic documentation, the Hebraic insight. We have been tricked you know, I talk about that all the time. We have been duped because of our disobedience and not keeping of the commandments of Yah. We fail to honor and keep the Most High's commands and follow His laws, His statutes, and His commandments. So now Yah has awakened us, and we're getting back on track. I'm glad of that. Hallelujah. And we're taking back our rightful place, and we don't need any heathen people telling us or teaching us Anything about what belongs to us. I'm glad y'all's awakening us because most of the stuff they teach has been twisted and only catering towards what they want. They have taken things out of context, out of place, added, taken away, put in different names and different wordings to make us think wrong according to the layout of the set apart scripture. And we need y'all to help us, the Hebrew Israelites, to get on point, get on track, go in, dissect our own insight because. He has called no other nation to teach this word but us, the Hebrew Israelites. No other nation. Think about that. I don't care if they get mad. I don't care if they fall on the floor. It is right there in the set apart scripture telling us that he only gave his word to Jacob and the children of Yasharel. Hallelujah. Now pause and calmly think about that. Salah. All right. Now we're going to talk about the Feast of Tabernacle or Sukkot. The seven feasts of the Feast of Tabernacle, Sukkot, are what we call booths. The Feast of Nations, the Feast of Ingathering, it deals with rejoicing. The Feast of Tabernacle of Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacle of Sukkot, is celebrated the fifth day, fifth meaning the number of grace, after Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. It is celebrated every year 
on the Hebraic biblical calendar on Tares 15 through 22, a total of seven days. Remember, seven is the number of divine completion. Sukkot is a week-long holiday that reminds us of the hardship of Yasharel's 40 years in the wilderness and provides us with the insight into the correct birth date of the awesome Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, our Savior. He was born during the Feast of Sukkot, not December the 25th, which is another pagan myth built upon the teachings and the lives of Nimrod. And he was circumcised on the eighth day. Yahushua was born in Bethlehem about five miles from Jerusalem. The name Bethlehem means house of bread. According to John 6, 43 through 51, Yahushua is the bread of life. And because there was no room at the end because of the censor, Luke 2 and 7, Miriam and Yosef ended up in a sukkut, a temporary dwelling. And once the Messiah returned to the earth to reign, he said that he would tabernacle with his people from all over the world from Jerusalem. Tabernacle is Hebrew 5521. Definition, Sukkot, a hut and a tent. Tabernacle Greek 4636. Sikonos. A uh, kainos, a hut or temporary dwelling place or residence, the human body as the abode for the Ruach, our spirit, and the Ruach Hakadesh dwelling on the inside of us. I came across a fascinating viewpoint in a reference to the Feast of Yahuwah. When looking at the Feast, you will see the first six are related to man's sin and struggles and his receiving divine assistance in the person of the Ruach Hakadesh while still here on the earth. In reference to the last feast, Tabernacles is related to divine rest. It is time of rejoicing and most exciting feast of the year. It also refers back to the past and the celebration of Yahuwah's faithfulness in the wilderness towards his people, Yahshua. It also focuses in on the present and the celebration of the completion of the hard labor of agriculture cycle. It looks to the future in celebration of Yahuwah's promise to return to the earth to reign and tabernacle with his people from all over the world from Jerusalem and rule with justice, righteousness, and holiness. Hallelujah. Yahuwah's premier plan was and has always been to dwell and tabernacle amongst his people. No other people, not the Gentiles, but the Hebrew Israelites. That was the first layout. That was the first plan of Yah. During the first feast of tabernacle, Yah's plan to dwell and tabernacle with man began to manifest. Tabernacle talk of the day when Yah's son will tabernacle amongst his people and the sojourners that are going to be with us. During this time, he will wipe away every tear and bring in the rule of Yah that will usher in such a peace, joy, holiness, and righteousness like the earth has never seen before. Genesis 33 through 17, we're going to start out talking about how everything was established when it comes down to the Feast of Tabernacles and Sukkot. And Jacob journeyed to Sukkot and built him a house and made booths for his cattle. Therefore, the name of the place is called Sukkot. Deuteronomy 16 and 16, three times in a year shall all thy males appear before Yahuwah, thy Elohim, in the place which he shall choose in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, in the Feast of Week, in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before Yahuwah empty. Exodus 23, 14-17, Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Thou shalt keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded thee in the times appointed of the month of all. For in it thou camest out from Egypt. None shall appear before me empty. And the feast of the harvest, first fruit of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is at the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors of the field, three times in the year, all the males shall appear before Yahuwah Elohim. Exodus 25, 8 and 9 says, And let them make a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I showed them after the pattern of the tabernacle, pattern of all the instruments, Whereof even so shall ye make it. Exodus 35, 20 and 22. And all the congregation of the children of Yahshua departed from the presence of Moshe. And they came, everyone whose heart stared him up, everyone whose his spirit made willing. And they brought Yahuwah's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. And for all his services and for all the holy garments. And they came, both men and women, as many as were willing hearted, 
brought bracelets, earrings, rings, tablets, all jewels of gold, and every man that offered offered an offering of gold unto Yahuwah. Now let's go to the rehearsals. Leviticus 23, 33 through 43 says, And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yisrael, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto Yahuwah. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. On the eighth day shall be in holy convocation unto you. Ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. It's a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. If you notice that these feasts have to be kept mainly uh, from our heart and as we read and memorize and go over, have a memory of these feasts and rehearse them by just reading uh, because there will be no fire done until we get back home to the wilderness training where the priests can conduct their office. And it says, and ye shall do no servile work. 37, these are the feasts of Yahuwah which shall be proclaimed to be holy convocations to offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah, a burnt offering, a meat offering, a sacrifice, drink offering, everything upon his day. Remember, everything is done from your heart. Everything is done to the best of your ability. Don't beat yourself up because you can't keep these feasts to the T. You only can commemorate, rehearse them, and go over them the best of your ability. 38. Besides the Sabbath of Yahuwah, and besides your gift, and besides all your vows, and besides all your free will offerings, which ye give unto Yahuwah, also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the Lamb, ye shall keep a feast unto Yahuwah seven days. On the first day shall be a Shabbat. On the eighth day shall be a Shabbat. Now let's look at something uh, very fascinating. Go back to that 39th verse again. It says, also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto Yahuwah seven days. On the first day shall be a Shabbat. On the eighth day shall be a Shabbat. Here you see a double Shabbat in the play. This Shabbat is entitled a Sabbaton. The first day is called Rishon. That's Hebrew word 7223. And the eighth Shabbat on the eighth day is called a Mini Sabbaton 80668. What is a high Sabbath? Three occur in the spring feast. The first and the seventh days of Passover and Shabbat Pentecost. Four occur in fall in the seventh month and are also called Sabbaton. Rosh Hashanah, trumpet, Yom Kippur, atonement, which is the Sabbath of Sabbaths, and the first and the eighth day of Sukkot, tabernacles. The eighth day after the fullness that is the seventh day of Sukkot, Yahuwah asked the people to stay and be with him and dwell with him one more day. The eighth day becomes a new beginning. Eight is the number of new beginnings. And it is a privilege to remain in Yahuwah's presence for an additional day. Therefore, you have the high Sabbath or Mia Sabbaton. The next rehearsal scripture is Micah 4, 1 through 7. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountains of the house of Yahuwah shall be established in the top of the mountain, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and the people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahuwah, to the house of Elohim of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his path, for the law shall come forth of Zion and the word of Yahuwah from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore, but they shall sit every man at his vine and under his fig tree and none shall make them afraid for the mouth of Yahuwah of hosts has spoken it for all people will walk everyone in the name of his Elohim and we will walk in the name of Yahuwah our Elohim forever and ever in that day said Yahuwah will I assemble her that exalted and I will gather her that is driven out and her that I have afflicted hallelujah that's talking about us being gathered together again and I will make her that haunted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation. And Yahuwah shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. Hallelujah. Now we're going to talk about it being unfulfilled. The Feast of Tabernacle being unfulfilled. We're going to talk about how 
one day in the future, Yah is going to bring it to pass. So the Feast of Tabernacles is also unfulfilled. It's one of the fall feasts. It's the last of the feast. It's a feast of rejoicing. Now we're going to read about five more set apart scriptures here. And I'm going to read them. I want you to hear this. It's dealing with the unfulfillment of this feast. But I want you to stand still with me as I read this and listen to what Yah has to say to us as we wait on him to return to get his people. Hallelujah. All right, let us read about the tabernacle feast being unfulfilled. Matthew 13, 37 through 43. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that soweth them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels. They shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be welling and gnashing of teeth, then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. I want to be in that number. Then shall the righteous shine forth. I want to be named among the righteous. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5, 1 through 6. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacles were dissolved, we have a building of Elohim and house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. For this mortal shall put on immortality. That's what it's talking about. This body is going to put on immortality. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan. That's right. Being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that has wrought us for the self-same thing is Elohim, who also has given unto us the earnestness of the Ruach. Therefore, we are also confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are present from Adonai. Hallelujah. Second Peter 1, 12-14. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I will put off this my tabernacle, even as I Adonai, Yahushua HaMashiach, has shown me. Revelations 14, 15 through 19, And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe, and he that sat up on the cloud thrust in the sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle, and another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sickle, sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, gather the cluster of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust it in the sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of Yah. Hallelujah. Revelation 21, 1 through 5. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yah out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yahuwah is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Yah himself shall be with them, and be their Yah. And Yah shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. Hallelujah. And he said unto me, Write for these words, true and faithful. Hallelujah. Now let's read about the millennial reign of Mashiach. Millennial means in Latin, thousand years. Or chism in Greek. It's a belief held by some that there will be a golden age of paradise on earth in which Mashiach will reign for a thousand years prior to the final judgment and future eternal state, the world to come of the new heaven and new earth. This belief is derived primarily from the book of Revelation 20, 1 through 6. Among these are those who hold this belief. This is not the end of the world, but rather the 
prenuptial age, the age just prior to the end of Hasetan's worldwide system in anticipation of a new heaven and a new earth under Yahuwah. Yahuwah's kingdom reign coming out of Revelation 21 and 21. Some believe that between the millennial proper and the end of the world, there will be a brief period in which a final battle of Hasetan will take place and immediately afterwards, the last judgment follows. In summary, Yah's plan for his people and the sojourners is clearly found in Leviticus 23rd chapter. Through the establishment of the establishment of the seven feasts of Yah, the number seven throughout the set apart scriptures stands for completeness. Just as seven days finish a week cycle, so will all the seven festival celebrations complete the work of Yah here on the earth. I hope you have enjoyed. I'm glad you stayed tuned. We have just finished the last of the seven feasts. I have a few more to go back and redo. Uh, we'll get to that later. But I, I'm glad you enjoyed this one. I pray that you continue to stop by and get fed this word from the Most High Yah. Look, we love you all. Shabbat Shalom. Have a great day.